All right, so we had some stuff lined up because uh, we were doing spy-type shows. I think the next one we had lined up was Danger Man, but I actually didn't have time to... Uh, I've been out here visiting in Japan, and I'm gallivanting around doing adventures. I had, didn't have time to get an episode of Danger Man and, and do the little research and stuff, so we'll do Danger Man next week. Instead, I thought what we could do, because I've had this sitting around for a bit, is... So last week we watched Man from U.N.C.L.E., which was a show that you remembered... You had like fond memories of, and then we watched it and we're like, oh yeah, pretty good. Not a bad show. This time it's going to be a show that I have fond memories of from when I was a kid, but it's not going to be good. This is going to be bad probably. <laughs> so, so this show is called Street Hawk. Have you ever heard of this show? Um, no, I don't think so. Street Hawk. Yeah. And even looking it up, like it looms large in my memory. But it turns out it only ran for 14 episodes for like half a year in 1985. It was not a famous show. But the gist of it is, uh, I mean, I'm sure you remember Airwolf, right? The show about the helicopter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's another one that I, you know, I remember liking it, but in vague terms. Or Knight Rider was the good one, I guess, with Kit. Yeah, Night Industries oh, yes. 2000. Yeah, the car that talks and David Hasselhoff. I have actually have rewatched Knight Rider and it holds up. It's actually kind of good. So this is exactly along those lines. Street Hawk was about a guy who has a super fast, awesome motorcycle. And I just remember it being such a treat when I was a kid. Like, oh, sweet, Street Hawk's on. You know, everybody thought Street Hawk was the coolest thing. We got to watch Street Hawk. But all I remember about it is that there's always a part in each episode where his motorcycle drives really fast and you're just waiting for the part where the motorcycle drives really fast, the same way you're just waiting for the part when they get in the Airwolf helicopter, or you're just waiting for the part where Kit says something cool and they do a spin, spin out. You know, like, I have no idea if the actual show had anything else going for it besides that there's a fast motorcycle. So I just thought it might be interesting to watch an episode and just see. I don't know. I mean, if it only lasted 14 episodes, it probably wasn't good, but maybe? <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, too, I guess the thing with this, too, is um, I was just going to grab the first episode, but it's one of those deals where it was like a made for TV movie style, like a lot of these shows have been. And then they aired it on TV as two episodes. So it would be kind of long. And what I could gather from it is basically everything that happens in that two hour pilot, they just explain at the beginning of the other episodes in like a 15 second voiceover. So I'm like, okay, we clearly don't need all of that. And episode two or episode three, I guess the first, the second proper episode guest star is George Clooney. So I'm like, all right, let's watch that one. Cause that'll be shorter. And it's George Clooney, <laughs> you know, young George Clooney before he was famous. So, okay, here's the rundown. Street Hawk is an American action television series that aired for 14 episodes on ABC in 1985. Uh, It was originally planned for the fall of 84, but the ABC executives moved it to be one of those like mid-season replacements, you know, where halfway through the year, they just take a show that was doing bad and replace it. Because this other show, they had a series called Call to Glory that was doing really well. So they didn't want, they were like, you hold on, Street Hawk. So have you ever heard of Call to Glory? I don't know what that is. No, I don't either. Just one sec. Very unprofessional of me, but I should have done this before. But let me just quickly look up. What the heck was this? Call to Glory is an American drama. It only aired for 22 episodes, but I guess that's longer than Street Hawk. Uh, Craig T. Nelson. Oh, yeah, the guy from Coach. And it's about fighter pilots? Yeah, he's a colonel. All right. So there's that. So for the plot, they say, the premise of the show is narrated before every episode. So we're going to hear this in the show. Let's see who does a better job, the narrator from the show, or here's my version. This is Jesse Mock, an ex-motorcycle cop injured in the line of duty. Now a police troubleshooter, he's been recruited for a top-secret government mission to ride Street Hawk, an all-terrain attack motorcycle designed to fight urban crime, capable of incredible speeds up to 300 miles an hour, and immense firepower. Only one man, federal agent Norman Tuttle, knows Jesse Mock's true identity. The man, the machine, Street Hawk. (laughs) So you can see why I liked that as a kid. It sounds like a G.I. Joe toy, right? (laughs) (laughs) Immense firepower. Like there was just a, a very corny feeling to 1980s action shows that they were so unpretentious and like they weren't, it wasn't, 
it wasn't uh, like nowadays that would be like a joke, like a joke version of an 80s show, like a kick puncher, the man whose punches are as strong as kicks, you know, like they just do that stuff as like a postmodern sarcastic take on the 80s. But in the 80s, it wasn't a joke. That was they were really trying to make a good show. <laughs> but, you know, it's like ridiculous. It sounds, you know, silly. But OK, the pilot episode shows the backstory even though we just explained it, but let's get into a little more detail. Jesse Mock's earlier work as a police officer and amateur dirt bike racer (laughs) leads him to be recruited by Norman Tuttle for the Street Hawk Project. The capabilities of the motorcycle and its computer backend are shown from providing the motorcycle rider with real-time mission information to assisting the motorcycle during its high-speed hyper-thrust runs. (laughs) Like, this was an evening show on ABC. It wasn't like a Saturday morning kid show. This was, like, for grown-ups, too. And it sounds like such a kid show, the hyper-thrust runs. Then all subsequent episodes show Mock leading a double life, a police public relations officer by day and a crime fighter by night. Street Hawk is regarded as a lawless vigilante and a public relations embarrassment by the police, especially by Mock's commanding officer, Captain Leo Alta Betty. <laughs> like he just <laughs> Alta Belly, my mistake. But you know, he's like the crusty old commanding officer. He's like, oh, we got to catch that Street Hawk. Like it's just J. Jonah Jameson and Spider Man. Like that's all it is. Yeah, it sounds like the Mod Squad too. Like the vigil, the the vigilantes and the the young renegades and. They didn't, they didn't have a machine to work with, but basically, same plot line. Yeah, basically all this stuff is the same. Like, I don't remember what the deal was with Airwolf, but with uh, Knight Rider, it was, like, weird. Like, he he gets facial reconstructive surgery in the first episode. He doesn't look like David Hasselhoff. Then he's like, I got to protect my identity, so I'll get this surgery so I'm the handsomest man in the world. <laughs> you know? But it all basically, these all boil down to be basically the same type of thing. Man, and there's a lot of notes on the Wikipedia page about the motorcycle itself. Definitely motorcycle nerds. Kind of like how my mother, the car, they wouldn't stop going on about that vintage car. It's obviously motorcycle nerds that remember this show because they're like, you know, the uh, motorcycle used in the show was a Honda, but they also had these six other stunt bikes and the blah, 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 and all this way too much detail. But the other thing that stood out to me is that the theme song, it's this band called Tangerine Dream that are like a really good, really catchy band, but it's like very 80s. Like you'd never think it was from a different decade, but they always do really good good music. And they kind of had a resurgence in uh, Grand Theft Auto V, the video game. They brought them in to make to do music. So they're still around. So uh, it's going to have a cool theme song, that's for sure. So yeah, the episode we're going to watch is called A Second Self. It's episode three, but kind of episode two, because the first one was a two-parter. It aired January 11th, 1985. An old friend of Jesse's comes to town, and they have fun. But what Jesse doesn't know is that his friend is working for some people who want Street Hawk. They're trying to get his motorbike. Okay, so wait, here's the other thing I want to look up real quick. because uh, So at the bottom it says, see also Cyclone, the 1987 film. So let me just see, what is this? Oh man, this is like a cool... 80s movie about a super motorcycle 1987 science fiction action film about a woman who must keep the ultimate motorcycle from falling into the wrong hands it's got martin landau in it (laughs) so i I don't think this is directly related but i can see why they were like hey if you like street hawk you probably also will like cyclone anyway i'll look that up in my own time (laughs) so yeah i guess all that we can do is watch street hawk and cross our fingers that it's a cool show. But at the very least, you know, at least this episode has George Clooney in it. So that's mildly interesting also just to see these people before they got famous when they're just popping up in these old shows. And a cool motorcycle. But, For sure it'll have a cool motorcycle. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of the worst case scenario is it could be that the only good part is when he does his hyper thrust run and his bike goes 300 miles an hour. But I don't know. Who knows? (laughs) It seems kind of like the Punisher, too. In the comics of the Punisher, he had this guy in a van who would help him, you know, like who would give him intel and stuff. So this seems similar. It's just the dude with his street hawk motorcycle. And then the guy who created the motorcycle is at a computer back at headquarters, like feeding them information. You know, it it might be okay. 
<laughs> but I don't want us to get our hopes up because it's probably not. So, uh, yeah, so anyone who wants to watch along, that is the Street Hawk episode. A Second Self is what we're going to watch. This is Jesse Mock, an ex-motorcycle cop injured in the line of duty. Now a police troubleshooter. He's been recruited for a top-secret government mission to ride Street Hawk, an all-terrain attack motorcycle designed to fight urban crime, capable of incredible speeds up to 300 miles an hour and immense firepower. Only one man, federal agent Norman Tuttle, knows Jesse Mock's true identity. The man, the machine, Street Hawk. Well, so, there yeah, was the, about 10 minutes of plot, and the rest of it was <laughs> live action. <laughs> yeah, I think you should say first um, what you think, because I'm blinded by nostalgia. So I feel like what you were saying during the show is the true opinion of how good it really is. And then I'll tell you the skewed view of how good I think it is. Plot was pretty schmaltzy, but standard for the 1980s. Very much, I'm sure I've seen that plot, like, who knows how many times. That's definitely an ad for motorcycles, fast cars. I mean, anybody who's into that stuff would love this show. You might as well take the plot out and just say, hey, let's just watch a car, big, fa- fancy car race. Let's watch uh, motorcycles and see how they work and all the fancy things that they can do. The coolest character in it was definitely George Clooney. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. The key, the key guy was so stereotypical, one of those 1980s stars. You know, he was always running around without his shirt on. They had a lot of sex scenes with the, well, not sexy, sexy scenes, not sex scenes. Sexy with the girls running around with their butts and their little bikinis. And, I mean, that was uh, obviously, yes, so very, very 80s colors, uh, bright, bright colors, everything coordinated, like when they were riding on those dirt bikes and their bikes and their outfits all were color coordinated, like ugh, too much, <laughs> too much. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird thing where, uh, I don't know, maybe it's like a sign of desperation or something, because why I was less disappointed, I actually kind of wasn't disappointed, I was actually kind of impressed by that show, because I'm thinking of even though I thought Knight Rider was pretty decent, the amount of time in Knight Rider that you actually get to see him in the car is pretty minimal. Or like Airwolf, when I remember that, it's like you're you're hoping for some cool helicopter stuff, but they only give you a little morsel. Or even like MacGyver. You only get to see him MacGyver something at one point in the episode maybe. So I guess what I liked about Street Hawk is... It gave you everything that you want out of an 80s dopey action show, but it really did. There was like a ton of motorcycle stuff and a ton of bikini babes and a ton of cool 80s music and a ton of just sparkly toothed George Clooney being the uh, secret bad guy, but really being his friend. And uh, yeah, so I mean, the, the plot was like nothing was bad, was really lame. And the main guy was nothing and was really lame. (laughs) But I guess I was just able to look past all that stuff because if you just want a nostalgic, like just to remember what it was like in the 80s, I guess that's what I liked about it. That show was how I remembered 80s shows being, where usually they're not. Usually they're actually very stingy with the action and very stingy with the music and very stingy with the cool 80s stuff. That show was like drowning you in it. It was full of that stuff. I have to agree. It certainly did. (laughs) They went overboard with all that live action stuff. And as you said, at one point, it was like watching a music video. And it was lots of music, lots of that music scene with actions with action in it. They really didn't need the plot. Yeah. And like it had Tangerine Dream. That song was really good. It had Bruce Springsteen. Like it just had all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, I think it really does just come down to to what you're nostalgic for, because for me, like music from the nineties, that's when I was a teenager. So I'll always like nineties music the best, but TV and movies from the eighties is when I was a kid because I was born in 79. So this stuff to me is always the best. Like there's nothing better than the Goonies or ET or whatever back to the future. That whole decade is just the best to me. 
even though it's not, you know, I can't really help it. That's just what I grew up with. So that's what I liked about that show is, is yeah, if you just want George Clooney to have big poofy hair and you want, uh, even like that spoiler alert, but he's only in this one episode and he gets tragically killed. And, you know, the scene of like, oh, man, I know you fucked me over, but you're my buddy. You're my friend. And it's like, I'm sorry, friend. Oh, and he dies in his freaking arms. And then they get back from the funeral and, and he's but they're already back to like, just let's just banter. Let's just jokey banter right back from the funeral. Oh, yeah, the funeral director gave me this. It's his precious medal from whatever from your guys shared past. So he goes to Mexico and he drives along the beach and he just throws the metal into the sea. And it's like so. And he, and he doesn't just drive along the beach. He drives to cool music and a cool sunset. Yeah, a lot of slow motion, I think, just so they can hide that the motorcycle's not really going as fast as they claim. But it makes it really cool. And, and yeah, it's just it's so it's like refreshing, I guess, in a weird way, because like there's a lot of eighties nostalgia out there. Like there's a, there's like this really good movie called Kung Fury that is, it's, it's like this, but it's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a grizzled cop. You know, it, it, it's all this stuff, but it's a joke now. And it was still a great movie. So it's so neat to see the time when this wasn't a joke. That's where all the references came from is crap like this. When in the eighties, they really thought this was good. And it's not. It's very corny and very cheesy. But I guess what I, I guess the way to describe it is like they're not making any more eighty stuff. We got what we got, and you can't have it again. It can never be like this again. You can't recreate it. You've just got what was there. So I guess that's what I would say about this show. If you're looking to remember the eighties, you could do a lot worse than Street Hawk. It is so eighties, but it's not a good show and specifically the main character is very milk toast and the plot is so boring like when you realize there's 10 more minutes you're like oh god 10 more minutes of this but if you can ignore that stuff and just like i guess another way i'd describe it is uh my roommate other keith we called him because his name was also keith my roommate in toronto used to be a bartender and he would just uh bring in a projector and project stuff on the wall of his cool trendy bar you could play an episode of Street Hawk on the wall with the sound off just as visuals of the 80s. And every hipster douchebag in Toronto would think it was awesome. <laughs> you know, like that's what this show is for. It's for that. It's not to watch as a good show because it's obviously not. And I have to say, they did not bore you with long, prolonged plot explanations which some of these shows do they just how they feel they have to tell you every little thing that's going on this show did not it, the, the plot as i say you could have put that plot in about a 10 minute spot um done the plot thing and then just do all the video stuff on the side it did not bore in that sense uh the plot was there it was pretty you know pretty lame but it was obviously all that live action beautiful machinery beautiful women with big hair and sexy there was nobody in there that was homely or ugly nobody <laughs> even the street scenes on the boardwalk everybody was gorgeous and shapely and, and the, the star running around without his shirt on you know he's a good looking guy and that you know good build and they were very much into that that uh showing the sexy side of, and the opulence of the 1980s. That was another thing. Everybody was beautifully dressed. Uh, even the, the cars were all nice. and <laughs> Everything was the opulence of the 80s. Would I watch it again? Well, if I was into watching just uh, car race scenes, yeah, yeah sure. But as, for, as far as the storyline, yeah, well, how many times have we seen those? Yeah, I mean, that's for sure true, because as much as I, I really did like it a lot more than I thought, I cannot imagine ever watching it again. <laughs> you know, I'm just glad that when I did dip back, it wasn't disappointing. I think we made the right choice, though, not watching the first episode, because can you imagine an episode twice that long where they're just explaining that he became Street Hawk? You know, that like they, they literally explained it in 15 seconds <laughs> and we would have been watching that for two hours. <laughs> So I'm glad we skipped that one. There were so many of those types of shows out anyway of the hero who's, uh, you know, Joe, boring police person or whoever he is in his normal life. And then he's this, you don't need an explanation as to 
how these people became those things. They just do. And that's all you need to know. Because you really want to see the cool guy doing his action. You really don't care about how he became that person. There's not enough depth to those shows for you to really feel that you have to have those big explanations. Yeah, very much. Definitely a waste. That would be, I mean, I guess you have to do it, but but we didn't need to watch it. I, th- I think, too, what you're saying about the opulence of the 80s is especially true, too. I mean, I don't know what it was really like because, uh, you know, I was just a, a tiny child. But, but that view of the 80s, there's like a weird comfort to it because that was the the capitalism decade, the greed is good, the Wall Street, you know, big shoulder pads and high powered businessmen. And like, like, it just felt like America was going full throttle toward like, we are the greatest country in the world. And we are the richest country in the world. And we are just going to bulldoze the world with our view of everything, which is crazy. But, but you kind of got to respect that kind of just the, the, the insanity of it. Like it really was this weird decade where the music was weird. The fashion was weird. The politics were incredibly conservative and it just, what well, just wasn't like any of the other decades. But again, I feel like it's probably, it feels more strong to me because I was a kid. Like, I don't know, did the eighties stand out to you in any particular way or were you just grinding away <laughs> at your, at your business? <laughs> I was just grinding away, and and, and a whole lot of society was just grinding away. But the image that was given in any magazines was just exactly what you said, that big, big power, big people dressed with big hair, big shoulder pads, big. Everything was big. Cars were big. That was the beginning of people buying houses that were big. But there was still a whole lot of... uh, crap going on in the world where people were, you know, there was the other side that was poor and struggling and uh, interest rates were extremely high. Uh, People think interest rates at like five and six percent were high. Well, the 80s was interest rates of 20 percent on a mortgage. So it was it was a tough time for a whole lot of society. But the image, particularly in North America, that was being promoted was big, beautiful, (laughs) big everything (laughs) big power bright beautiful colors uh but that was probably only a very small part of the populace that was experiencing that but it was all shoved in everybody's faces every magazine you picked up there she was big beautiful sexy yeah and it's kind of a catch-22 of uh it's it's a kind of a comforting idea in a weird way like to go back to just to think of that time and remember it but if I really had to go back to that time, then what, I got to watch freaking Street Hawk on TV? I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, like it's probably not actually fun to go back to, to actually watch Hulk Hogan and Mr. T and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, I don't actually want to, but it would probably get old real fast. But, but to dip back in, yeah, it's just like a fun little walk down memory lane. So, yeah, that's how I feel about that show is, yeah, definitely not actually a good show. But as a representative of the 80s, man, it's top 10. It's primo. It's like so much better at doing that than I expected it to be. <laughs> so, so thumbs yeah. up for me. I have to agree. I, I have to agree. I would not recommend it as a, as a plot show because you know, there were any number of those out there. But if you want a lot of live action just coming right at you and again and again and again, that show was full of it. Yeah, or like, a, you know, if you had a house party or something with a bunch of people in their 40s, <laughs> you know, put that on in the background and people will just, they'll just like how it feels. They'll like the vibe. <laughs> that's, that's what that show is for. 